Hey guys, it's Elena. This week I made the famous Selkie puff dress and I think it turned out pretty good. So I'm gonna walk you through everything that I did and you can make one just like this. If you'd please like and subscribe, it would really help me out. So before you do anything else, the first thing we need to do is get our own measurements. So you're first going to get your under bust measurement, over bust measurement, the actual bust measurement, and then kind of that width of the bandeau that you're going to have, and then the width of your skirt length. And then go ahead and just record all those measurements, and here you can see just a rough little picture that I drew of all of the pieces that I wanted so I can make sure I had everything right. You're going to need five and a half yards of organza, and I wanted to line my dress. I don't think the original Selkie is lined, but I wanted this to be a little bit more practical. So I got three yards of nude lining, and that seemed to be perfect for me. You're going to use that lining on the skirt and the bodice, and use two layers of organza for the skirt, the bodice, and then one layer for the sleeves. Because I wasn't using any specific pattern for this dress, I was kind of just winging it. And so what I did for the bodice, for the bandeau, uh, I wanted three panels of fabric because that's how the original sulky dress is on the front. So what I did was I cut out just one strip of fabric that fit about a little bit bigger than the width and the length of my bust measurements and then I cut it into three sections or panels and then pinned it kind of at a curve and then just held it up to my breast to see how it fit me and then I just kind of adjusted the pins until I liked the fit and then I went ahead and trimmed it and then you can see here I am pinning all those panels together and then sewing all those panels together. I'm doing the lining and then the organza. And then you can go ahead and pin those two together. And because we have a lining and then obviously an outside, you want those finished seams to be um, facing outward. So you are going to have the raw edges facing each other for the lining and the organza outside. Once you have sewn those all together along the top, you can go ahead and flip it over and then do a really nice straight stitch along the top just to make sure that everything is staying down and in place where you want it to be. Do make sure that it is a perfect fit on you because after this point it's very hard to adjust the fit. So make sure that it fits really nice. And then here I'm just using the remaining of my fabric to cut out my skirt pieces. So I have two skirt pieces a front and a back but make sure to leave some extra room for a sleeve. So I went ahead and did a basting stitch all along the top, gathered it, and then I am just sewing those front and back pieces together at the side seams. Here I am cutting out the skirt out of the lining material that I have. So I have obviously less material of the lining, so I'm just taking a generous amount of skirt material, but a little bit smaller than what I had for the organza. And I'm just cutting out two rectangles, one for the front and one for the back. And then you can do basically the exact same thing that you did before. Go ahead and do a basting stitch at the top to gather it and then sew the front and back pieces at the side seams. And here's the finished result of that cute little gather. Once you have your organza gathered and your lining gathered, you can put the pieces together. So I'm just making sure that I have it the right 
width so that it will fit my bodice nice and snug and then I am just pinning together that lining in organza so I can attach those two pieces. It is a little bit bulky so make sure that you're going super slow when you do that straight stitch to attach them. Once you feel really good about that, next it is time to attach your bodice to the skirt. And this is always one of my favorite parts because it really feels like it's turning into an actual dress. So just line up those side seams with your bodice and pin it together. Before you actually stitch it together, make sure that you really like the fit, you've tried it on, and it looks good. Here I am realizing that I forgot to allow space for a zipper. <laughs> so I am taking the back of my skirt where the bodice meets in the back and I am cutting down a couple of inches allowing myself to put in a zipper. And then you can go ahead and just do that straight stitch attaching your bodice to the skirt. Be very careful making sure that you don't catch any fabric below. This literally took me so long to do. <laughs> and in typical Elena fashion, I ran out of bobbin halfway through and didn't realize it. So <laughs> I had to refill my bobbin and then go back and finish what I had thought that I already finished. Here I am just going in and trimming any excess fabric. There are a lot of layers going on here, so this step is very important. So the next step is to take care of the sleeves. I stared at that fabric for so long. I was like the meme lady trying to do math in her head. That's what literally was me. I finally gained the courage and started cutting. So I'll insert a picture of the general shape that you want, but I decided that I would go and start large and then trim down the excess if I needed to. But this was the last of my fabric and I wanted to get it right on the first time. Part of what makes a sucky puff, <laughs> sucky. Part of what makes a sulky puff dress a sulky puff dress is the giant puff sleeves. So definitely leave yourself plenty of space to have a big giant puff. What you're going to do next to attach the elastic is take the shoulder edge of your puff sleeve and fold it over twice and you want that width or hem to be about a half inch wide so that you have enough room to feed through a, about a quarter inch elastic. So go ahead and do that all the way down on the shoulder part and also at the base of your sleeve so that it actually is a cute little puff. Next, you're going to attach a safety pin to the edge of your elastic and feed it through that channel. Attach it and make sure that you like the puffiness on. And then once you're satisfied with it, you can go ahead and attach it to your bodice. I basically lined up on the front the edge of the sleeve with my front panel seam um, but this is totally up to your preference just pin it on make sure you like it and then just go ahead and sew it on and secure it the next step is the zipper so i went ahead and bought an invisible zipper that matched the color of my dress and then i set the zipper up to the length that i wanted it to be and then just did a really thick chunky zigzag stitch at that length so that I could stop it and that is my custom zipper length. After that you are just going to go ahead and pin that zipper on to both sides of your fabric 
Zip it up before you sew it to make sure that everything is lined up correctly and that you like the fit of it. This is the time to perfect both of those things. Also, I would suggest using an invisible zipper foot if you have one, and if you don't, get one. <laughs> it literally has changed my life, except for in this moment when I caught a huge chunk of fabric and had to pick out half of my zipper. <laughs> that was unfortunate. So be very careful making sure that you don't catch any of that gathered fabric. Go all the way down and then do the same thing on the other side. If you would like a more in-depth zipper tutorial, just let me know in the comments and I can totally make one for you guys. Here she is, all zipped up and in her cute little zipper glory. I think it turned out pretty decent for my first time doing this zipper. The next step, and final step, thank goodness, is to hem this dress. So I put it on and figured out how much I wanted to take off, and then just went ahead and measured that all along the bottom. And then I just did a similar thing cutting off that lining fabric as well. This part is a little bit difficult. If you can have the length determined before you put everything together, that will really help you out a lot. Also in typical Elena fashion, we're doing a double folded hem. So just fold it up about a quarter inch and then fold it again and then sew along. There are three layers of fabric, so this is going to literally take you an eternity to get through, but once you have done it, it will feel really, really good and look amazing. So the actual last step that I always forget about and also hate this part <laughs> is attaching the hook and the eye at the top of the zipper. This part actually is very important and really makes a big difference. So don't forget to do it, it really helps. Now our Selkie puff dress is complete and we can live out our Selkie puff dress dreams. <laughs> this dress turned out so dreamy and cute. I love it so much. The color really is perfect and looks so cute. Thank you guys so much for watching. I hope you loved this tutorial and you're able to make your own Selkie puff dress. If you'd please like this video and subscribe, it would really help me out. Oh, did I see?